I'm going to make some general assumptions to the um, to to this uh, presentation. I um, will assume that people are familiar with Hori astrology or uh, traditional Hori astrology, but even if they're new, I will now and then refer to some basic principles just to kind of have a foundation, a basis, right, for, for our discussion. And um, I'd like to start with a quote by Banati, which I found was both humorous and illustrative. So he said uh, in his book uh, on questions on Hori astrology, uh, oftentimes certain people come to an astrologer asking him for many and diverse topics, and they believe that it's just as easy to respond as it is to inquire. <laughs> so I find it both very truthful and humorous, right? So we all face in our practices situations where people ask multiple questions or they need to make a decision between multiple choices, and that sometimes puzzles the beginning Hori astrologers how to distinguish those things in the chart, right? Because we have... In traditional view, we have seven planets that we use, you know, the, including the moon. Um, usually, trans Saturnian planets are not uh, used up in, in a more traditional sense. So we have only literally seven choices. And so if someone is asking uh, about comparison between the two or about many choices that they have to make, people are often puzzled as to how to do it. So this presentation will focus on such scenarios, such situations where astrologers are asked to provide guidance. Uh, on multiple choices, multiple options, um, or they're given many different questions or they're asked about different people. So what do you do in such scenarios? So my other basic assumptions for this, uh, for the sake of this presentation is that Hori astrology is a branch of astrology that focuses on answering questions in the moment, arising in the moment. It does not require a natal chart usually because Hori chart is the chart, is the birth chart of the questions. So when the client propounds a question to the astrologer, then we erect the birth chart of that question for the time and space. Um, usually, it depends on the astrologer's practice, but uh, you know, usually it's done for the astrologer place. But some astrologers do it for uh, you know location of the client, right? But we're not going to go into this. The general principle is the Hori chart is a birth chart of a question, right? And in presentation today, I will be showing you examples of various Hori questions. Uh, asked in my practice uh, or in my consultation group. And so I'm going to use only seven visible planets as the main lords of the signs and houses, even though you will see in my examples, I do have trans Saturnians because I do find them meaningful, but I'm not going to go to them as uh, my main significators, right, for, uh, for the signs and the houses. And uh, in we're going to use only major aspects um, in general. Uh, and um, which is, you know, conjunction, sextile, trine, square, and opposition. And we're going to use so-called significators. So the first house usually is taken for the person asking the question, and we call them the querent, someone who is inquiring, right, the querent from the inquiry query. And another house we use for the matter asked about, it's the quesited. So it can be one house or many, right? If people are asking about career, we tend to go to the 10th house in the traditional astrology. If uh, someone is asking about a romantic relationship, we tend to go to the seventh house and so on, right? So we look to the other house and their lords to signify uh, the matters asked about. And in Hori astrology, we call them quesited, right? So I'll be referring to the querent and the quesited and we also will look at the moon as co-significator of the querent and the question. So these are general principles. And if you are experienced astrologer, uh, you know, that's that's really not new to you at all. You know, before we get into the into the meat of our discussion today, I'd like to also say you will see in my presentation today, I prepared many quotes and I will show you how different traditional astrologers approached questions of multiple choice. However, I'm not um, proposing that only one method should be used or could be used. You know, there is this debate now in astrology of history and tradition versus application and practice, right? And so in reality, we do need to know our history and our tradition because it does have meaning, symbolic, philosophical, spiritual. But at the same time, we're divining, right? We're calling for... Uh, for the spirit, right, to, to help us when we analyze the chart. So you will see, even in my examples, I'm going to be applying principles um, 
and yet there's this element of synthesis, right, where, where it comes together. So in the beginning, students of astrology usually try to rely heavily on the uh, on the rules because it gives it guides us, right? Otherwise, chart can be overwhelming. But as you become more experienced, the rules inform your synthesis of the chart in the end, right? So if you're beginning astrology, right, go with the rules, experiment, check it out, right, in your examples. If you're an experienced astrologer, in, be informed, right, of various ways and, and use them uh, within your practice and within your sort of spiritual understanding, right, of the matter. So um, I think there's a general I ideas that I want to, uh, this is like based on this kind of uh, ideas and approach to Hori astrology. And you will see that I approached different charts in my examples from different angles. So let's talk about, so a client comes to an astrologer or client emails an astrologer, which is common, uh, right? I get a lot of inquiries by email or, you know, or Facebook or whatever. And um, we get uh, different questions asked and we face different scenarios in, in such um in such situations, but again, I'm going to be focusing on the scenarios of multiple choice, multiple options, multiple choice. So generally we have four types of scenarios and we will go through them, see how the traditional ancient astrologers approach them. And I'll show you examples from modern day, from my own case files, uh, how, how that applies, right? In, in the moment in time. So, but anyway, there are four types of scenarios. The first type, the client inquires about multiple questions, multiple unrelated questions, I should say. Um, they may or may not have significance with each other, right? But they generally they're their own, each of them their own sphere, right? So for example, will my friend reach out? Will my job situation improve? Will I marry? Uh, will I get the pension owed to me? And so on. And um, it might be that they come all together as an inquiry we'll talk about in a moment, uh, or they might come separate, right? So anyway, Basically, astrology is propounded with multiple questions from a client. So that's one scenario. Um, another scenario, the client inquires about multiple options for the same question. So I want to invest, but which option is better, number one or number two? I want to go to a doctor. Who is going to be more beneficial for me? Doctor number one, two, three, and you know, even maybe more. I get questions like this from my family often. Uh, who should I hire as my lawyer? option one and option two, and so on. So this situation where the client is asking for guidance, who is gonna be more beneficial for me? That's not the same as asking multiple questions, right? And then um, another scenario is possible. The client has only two choices, right? And usually compares between his present or her present situation and the new. And you see that in questions such as, should I stay at my current job or explore something new? Or I get a lot of those questions. Or should I move from this location to another? That's very common. And so we will review that kind of scenario, um, which is, I will call it scenario three, right? So we can distinguish. And in that case, we comparing present and potential future. And then finally, client asks generally about many people or many instances of the same. So, for example, and we'll discuss Lily's example, he was making about will all people on the trip be safe, right? So if there are, like, let's say four people on a trip, or I don't know, 10 sailors on a ship, as in his example, then how do we distinguish person one, person two, person three, and so on? Could be a variation of this, um, will the schools of my choice accept me, right? I, I actually got quite a few dramatic inquiries of that nature, uh, my, my clients, or sometimes children of my friends, they were applying uh, to the universities and um, uh, undergraduate programs, right? And they, they made this um, effort of uh, requesting many, and now they're anxiously waiting which one will accept them, right? So which of the schools will accept me, right? So there may be school one, school two, school three, or even 10. I one time got a question with 10 schools. And your job gives some guidance is or to, to distinguish between them. So these are the four general scenarios, and I'm gonna uh, try to slowly go one by one for each and show you my uh, examples.